In this video, I'll introduce industrial direct drive servo motor technology and applications. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. I'll show you what a direct drive motor is, and then compare performance metrics to transmission based alternatives. I'll illustrate the specifics using a few application examples and a case study. Let's get started. Here is a typical direct drive motor mounted to a steel plate. I can rotate the flange by hand when it's powered off. Now I'll turn it on and run a gentle test move. A direct drive motor is characterized by the cylindrical shape with a hole through the middle of the rotating flange. There is no motor shaft like you'd see on a standard servo motor. But the rotating part is still called the rotor with mounting holes along the flange. The load attaches directly to the flange of the motor. Hence the name, direct drive motor. Even this small unit is pretty heavy, so I'll use a 3D model for the rest of this description. The part that does not move is called the stator. It's where the cables connect. The stator also has mounting holes, which bolt to the machine frame. Motors like this may also be called a torque motor or a hub motor. Direct drive motors have much higher torque than a standard servo motor and much lower speed. They trade speed for torque with typical top speeds of just a few hundred RPMs down to only tens of RPMs with extremely high torque. The speed torque curve of a direct drive motor is a lot like that of a servo motor with a gear reduction around 10 to 1 and up, sometimes as high as 100 to 1. These curves show the RMS and peak operation points for an application that would fit either a geared servo motor or a direct drive motor. Both motors have continuous torque up to about 28 newton meters and peak torque up to about 50 newton meters with a top speed just over 100 rpm. And here are the motors shown to scale. The direct drive motor is obviously much larger with a wide mounting flange. Both motors can solve this application but even the best gearbox adds a level of compliance and backlash. For this reason, the direct drive motor will accomplish the task with higher accuracy, better repeatability, and lower settling time. I'll explain more about this in a few minutes. Direct drive motor applications have relatively low speed, and the mechanism is designed for flange mount instead of shaft mount. The most common application is a rotary table or rotary indexer. Another good application is to drive the spool in a winding application or rolls for printing or cutting. Joints for robotic mechanisms can also benefit from the performance and compact size of a direct drive motor. Rotary positioning of grippers for pick and plays or antennas, telescopes, rotary part fabrication, and laser positioning are also applications where a direct drive motor can offer superior performance. Direct drive motors are generally not used on linear mechanisms. The linear direct drive equivalent is a linear motor, which directly drives the load to avoid backlash and compliance found in mechanisms such as a belt, ball screw, or rack and pinion. Like a standard servo motor, the rotor of a direct drive motor is built from an iron structure with an assembly of permanent magnets. The coils in the stator produce a moving magnetic field which applies torque in the desired direction. Position feedback to the control system is provided through a rotary encoder. Two basic rotor design layouts exist, inner rotor and outer rotor. This is inner rotor with stator coils on the outside. And the opposite configuration is outer rotor with the stator coils on the inside. The inner rotor configuration is capable of the highest acceleration for a given motor size. Outer rotor means the motor has a higher moment of inertia, better suited to control high inertia loads. Two basic stator designs also exist, iron core and coreless. The stator coils can be wrapped around an iron core, which increases the magnetic field strength in the stator resulting in higher torque in a smaller motor. Coreless means there is no iron in the coils. While the torque for a given motor size is lower, coreless provides the most accurate speed control 
without the cogging torque component of torque ripple. It makes sense to understand the direct drive motor alternatives for a given rotary application. I'll use a few 3D models to represent these machines. The most popular is to use a planetary gear or other gear technology to reduce the speed and increase torque. A similar effect can be achieved using a system of belts and pulleys, and sometimes both are used together. Now let's look a little deeper into the details behind the direct drive performance advantage for rotary applications compared to a gear or belt mechanism with similar torque and speed characteristics. We'll look at cost, torque, speed, rigidity, backlash, and others listed here. I'll define each of these metrics and then discuss the strengths and weaknesses of each technology. Please bear in mind that this is not a strict and absolute evaluation, but represents general industry trends. I'll start with the bottom line, initial cost. A belt and pulley transmission costs significantly less than a gearbox. But the maximum reduction is about 3 to 1. This means that an application with low speed and high torque will require a significantly larger and more expensive servo motor and amplifier. The initial cost of a direct drive motor is still significantly higher than either of these transmission-based alternatives. But in addition to the motor and transmission, you have the cost of couplings and additional bearings to support the load. Integrating these components incurs a design and engineering cost, and then consider the long-term cost of performance and maintenance. For low-speed rotary applications, the direct drive solution is a simple design which may actually incur the lowest initial cost while providing the highest long-term performance. One of the most important performance characteristics is rigidity. Every mechanically connected element has a level of rigidity, a spring constant. This rigidity, along with the mass of each element, defines the natural frequencies of oscillation for the system. If these frequencies are too low, the release of energy can cause a significant disturbance to the motor. This interferes with the control system algorithms that position the load. In a belt-based transmission, a servo coupling connects the gearbox output to the rotary load. The weight of the load is supported by a ring-style bearing. The belt and pulley ratio has a practical limitation of around 3 to 1, beyond which the angle of the belt results in too little surface contact with the drive pulley. It's usually not practical to attempt to correct the situation with multiple stages or excessively long belts. Instead, the servo motor would be oversized in order to achieve the required torque for a low-speed application. Belt-based transmissions generally have the lowest rigidity and therefore the lowest, most problematic resonant frequencies. In this example, as the motor begins to turn, first the belt deflects according to its spring constant, then the coupling deflects before the load finally moves. Rigidity losses also occur due to motor couplings and long machine shafts. With a gear-driven transmission, a servo coupling connects the gearbox output to the rotary load. The weight of the load is supported again by a ring bearing. Planetary and multi-stage gearheads are generally preferred for low backlash and high rigidity, but a single-stage gear reduction is shown here just for simplicity. Gearboxes have much higher rigidity than belts, but the same principles apply. The motor turns the input gear, which deflects, which turns the output gear, which also deflects to some extent. The coupling to the load may be what deflects the most. The direct drive motor bypasses all of the transmission components, the resultant compliance, and the associated resonant frequencies. The direct drive motor is typically equipped with very large bearings for greatly increased axial and radial load capacity. That's not to say there is no resonance. Resonant frequencies can still be generated by the load itself or through any mounting plates or extensions between the motor and the load. There can even be resonance between the stator of the motor and the machine frame, just as are found on transmission-based systems. But the high rigidity of the direct drive system results in high resonant frequencies which lie outside the operational system bandwidth. Resonant frequency is also a function of load inertia and motor inertia. This is summarized in a key performance metric called the load-to-motor inertia ratio. Servo systems are commonly sized for a load-to-motor inertia ratio less than 10 to 1 
for acceptable control of the load by the motor through the flexible coupling. Direct drive applications don't use a flexible coupling and therefore can support much higher inertia ratios. Load inertia is nevertheless important for direct drive motors as it limits the acceleration and deceleration rate according to Newton's law. It also affects bearing life. The low friction in a direct drive motor means that nearly all the power to stop a moving load must be supplied by the electronic drive system, which can also limit the maximum load. The performance of rotary drive transmissions suffer from an effect called backlash. This is lost motion when the mechanism reverses. The gearbox has a level of backlash between the drive sprocket and the output sprocket. For the belt system, backlash occurs between the teeth of the belt and pulley. Manufacturers have developed ways to reduce the backlash in drive transmissions and electronically compensate for it in the control system, but there's always some level of backlash and it tends to get worse as the mechanism wears. The result, once again, is that the position of the load cannot be exactly determined by the position of the motor encoder, and it can also lead to tuning instability and noisy operation as the load effectively disconnects from the motor for a short time upon reversal. The direct drive motor is the only rotary drive mechanism that can truly claim zero backlash. Since the motor is directly connected to the load, the load position measured by the motor encoder is much closer to the load itself. Rigidity, load inertia, inertia ratio, and backlash are all interrelated factors that worsen the position settling time of a mechanism. Position settling time is the delay between the end of the commanded move and when the mechanism actually stops. Reducing this delay is especially important for applications with many short moves. Waiting for the machine to stop can represent a significant fraction of the cycle time. The settling time in a direct drive motor can be significantly reduced with good tuning due to its high rigidity and zero backlash although it may be necessary to mitigate vibrations originating in the load itself. Achievable settling times for the gearbox and belt generally follow the level of mechanical rigidity and backlash, with gearboxes generally outperforming belts. Remember that the position of these mechanisms is measured through the encoder of the rotary servo motor. The encoder may indicate that the load has settled with a low settling time, but what that really means is that the encoder has stopped moving. The load may still be in motion, and not yet settled or experiencing vibration and oscillation. Rigidity and backlash in the transmission interfere with the measurement of settling time through the encoder. However, in a direct drive motor, the encoder is essentially fixed to the load itself, reporting the true settling time of the load. Backlash and rigidity also contribute to a mechanism's positioning accuracy and repeatability. Accuracy is a measure of the deviation from the ideal, in this case position. If the machine is commanded to move 90 degrees, does it move exactly 90.00000 degrees? Or if you were to measure it externally, did it only move 89.99999? What's often more important is repeatability, also called precision. Because if the machine can move 89.999 repeatably when you command 90, then simply adjust the command until it does repeatably move to the required position. The control system measures position at the encoder. Rigidity and backlash add an element of uncertainty to those measurements. Additionally, the manufacturing process of a gearbox or belt system will affect the accuracy and repeatability. Only the direct drive motor, by natural design, measures the load directly and moves it without the backlash and compliance problems found in rotary drive transmissions. You may be thinking, why not compensate for the backlash and rigidity of gearbox or belt transmissions by adding a rotary encoder to the load if the application requires it? Yes, this is possible, and at Yaskawa we call it full closed loop. Full closed loop allows the position loop of the rotary motor to be closed by an additional rotary encoder mounted directly to the load. This improves repeatability and accuracy, but does not do much to improve rigidity, settling time, and wear. Adding an external encoder like this is rarely implemented because it adds significant cost and complexity. Here's an example of a machine that takes advantage of direct drive motor technology. The laser engraves very small features onto a very small part 
which is rotated precisely and rapidly by a direct drive motor. The whole assembly must be small because it is suspended on an arm which also rotates. Compact design with high accuracy and low vibration makes the direct drive motor a superior choice over gear or belt transmissions. This machine relies on high-speed rotary positioning of a gripper to handle small parts. It's easy to see the direct drive motor here on this machine and the simple mounting design. Since there was no backlash, the positioning was made repeatable on this small load with a settling time lower than 5 milliseconds. Additionally, the hollow bore design provided space for all vacuum tubes and wires to pass through the motor mount. This multi-axis robotic mechanism is called a four-bar linkage. The direct drive motor drives the long leg, while a rotary motor drives the short leg with the shaft running through the hollow bore. It's a compact and low-profile solution for a variety of positioning applications. Rotary printing applications like this can benefit from the direct drive motor to achieve high repeatability and low backlash in order to respond to slight phase adjustments and remain synchronized with the material. Now let's look at a case study. A machine may actually be losing money due to settling time performance, and this is rarely considered during the servo motor sizing process. This effect was clearly demonstrated in a series of articles written by engineers at Yaskawa America Incorporated and published by Control Engineering. In this setup, a Yaskawa direct drive motor and a Yaskawa gear motor of similar power capacity ran the same load with the same motion profile. On the gear motor, the planetary gear was a 50 to 1 reduction, and the rated backlash was less than 5 arc minutes. The move profile required both motors to accelerate and decelerate near their peak torque rating, and with an RMS torque just below the continuous rating. Both motors were tuned until the settling time was near 50 milliseconds, as measured by the motor encoder. The graph of the result shows the motor position approaching the 45 degree mark in green. Blue shows the actual position of the motor, lagging about 50 milliseconds behind, settling to within 5 hundredths of a degree in a time of about 25 milliseconds and red shows the externally mounted ring encoder position. On the direct drive motor, both encoders report essentially the same position at all times. But on the gear motor, you see the load is ahead of the encoder during the final deceleration, and then oscillates at the end of the move. This low frequency oscillation is due to the backlash and compliance of the gearbox, and not oscillation of the load itself. It does not settle to within that same 5 hundredths of a degree until about 130 milliseconds. The motor encoder does not reveal this oscillation, so an additional delay would be required in the programming sequence to wait for it to settle out. Let's put this case study in terms of dollars and cents in a real application scenario. Consider that this machine represents an 8 stationed index table producing the proverbial widget. Each of these 45 degree index moves theoretically complete in 200 milliseconds with the 5 hundredths of a degree in position tolerance. Then an external 2 second work process happens at each station. At the final station, one widget is produced, resulting in a revenue of 50 cents. The direct drive system completes the cycle in 2,225 milliseconds, producing revenue of $809 per hour. The gear motor takes 2,305 seconds due to longer settling time and produces $772 per hour of revenue. That difference of $37 per hour may not seem like much, but do a little more math and it's a difference of $293 in an 8-hour shift, nearly $1,500 in a 5-day week, and more than $73,000 per year. Even if each widget revenue is only $0.10, cents, the machine could still produce nearly $15,000 more revenue per year in the same operation time. So I hope this case study illustrates how important it is to consider the impact of achievable settling time when sizing and selecting the servo motor for the application. But that's not the end of the story. A natural part of machine ownership is wear and maintenance. 
In a direct drive motor, the main motor bearing is the only point of friction and wear, and these motor bearings are typically sized for extremely heavy loads. But gearboxes and belt transmissions have other moving parts that wear out, may require lubrication, or other periodic maintenance. Audible noise is also louder compared to direct drive motors. As they wear, the performance of these transmission-based mechanisms begins to decline. The backlash and stiffness get a little worse every day. Therefore, expect position settling time, accuracy, and repeatability to continually degrade as time goes on. For low-speed rotary servo applications, look closely and strongly consider direct drive motors. The upfront cost is easily offset by the increase in performance, simplicity of design, and ease of maintenance. Let me leave you with a few design considerations. First, remember that the bearing on a direct drive motor is robust and can support the weight of the entire load. No additional bearing is required, as would be when gearboxes or belt transmissions are used. This is a savings in part cost, design, engineering, and maintenance on the system as a whole. Next, the rigidity discussion so far was largely limited to the transmission components but the rigidity of the machine itself also comes into play. The stability of any motor depends on a rigid connection from the stator to the machine base. Adapter plates and frame structural members must be as robust as possible. What may look rigid is likely to flex and deflect under the extreme torque applied by a direct drive motor. Both mounting frames and load plates can be sources of machine oscillation in any application not just with direct drive motors. Finally, it may be tempting to consider an oversized gear motor solution to beat the initial cost of a direct drive motor with the intention to compensate for long settling time by programming a faster move. Keep in mind, however, that faster acceleration requires more torque and therefore a larger amplifier, coupling, gearbox, and possibly changes to the machine frame. And be sure not to exceed limitations on the load itself or on the parts and assemblies in motion. It is also useful to remember that while a larger motor on the same load results in lower inertia ratio, the resonant and anti-resonant frequencies will actually decrease and become more likely to cause complications with oscillation and tuning. I hope this gives you a solid introduction or review. Yaskawa does offer coreless motors and a wide selection of iron core inner rotor and outer rotor direct drive motors. So when it's time for a direct drive motor, please consider Yaskawa. Thank you for watching this video and please go to www.yaskawa.com for more information.